Okay guys, so we're at the 100K party. And at our last party, at the 75K party, Ricky and I read an old fan fiction about ourselves. I guess way back in the day, a lot of people used to ship us and write some wonderful literature about what they imagine our romantic relationship to be like. And fortunately, we found another one. We found another fan fiction about us. So we are going to be performing this fan fiction for you tonight. So let me go ahead and call Ricky. Hello, everyone. Oh my God, okay. So just so you guys know, this is this is a bit of a cold read from me and Ricky, okay? This is gonna be our first performance of this fan fiction. It is, yeah. So. This is the fan fiction we're gonna be reading today. It is called Two of a Kind. The description says, Jen and Ricky are really good friends and close to each other. What will happen as time flies? What will happen as time flies? 15,000 reads, so. Yeah, I'm not gonna lie. This one, this one did really well. This did really well. 15,000 reads is very impressive to me. Yeah, I feel like maybe one person here has read it. There's gotta be at least one person. Yeah, I, I feel like there is one person who's read this. Come on, tell us. Have you guys read it? We know you're here. So there are a couple of different characters in this fan fiction. I'm gonna be performing myself <laughs> and everyone else and Ricky will be performing the role of Ricky. Chapter one, Jen's POV. Hey guys, so before the story starts, please let me introduce myself. Obviously, I am Jen. So today is the day that Andrea, Arden, Lauren, and me are moving into a bigger house. OMG, we should have hired the workers so we don't need to move all these things by ourselves. Am I right, ladies? Arden <laughs> says. Err, I wonder who we can call for help now. Maybe we should call JC, Kean, Connor, and Ricky for help. <laughs> Lauren smirks and looks at me. Does your eyes feel sore? Do I need to give your eyes a massage? I said. Don't act like you don't know anything, girl. We all know you have a crush on him, Andrea teases me. Well, I won't give any opinion on that unreal statement. Um, I admit that I really have a crush on Ricky, but I just get embarrassed really easily, so I refuse to talk about this that much. Okay, I'm, I'm on the phone. Hello? <laughs> it's me, Lauren. Yeah, uh, can you guys come help us with the moving? Well, I feel like nothing can be done with only four girls. Yeah. Okay, bye. Lauren ends the phone call. What does that mean nothing can be done with only four girls? <laughs> we need some big, strong, manly men to come over here. <laughs> Suddenly, we hear the doorbell ring, and I know that he is here. Chapter two. Hey guys, we are here to save the world. It's his voice. I turn around and see the one and only Ricky. Hey, Jenny, doing good? I love when he calls me Jenny, but I just don't want my feelings to be too obvious. So I hide my feelings because I'm afraid of hurting myself, himself, and our friendship. Don't call me that, I said, and pick up a quite heavy box. Well, let me help you. He takes the box away and starts moving them to the truck. Then I finally notice that Connor and Kean are also here. Maybe I can only see Ricky at that moment, so I didn't even notice that the others are here. All right, it's now my POV, everyone. <laughs> I am walking upstairs to help with other boxes. I want to walk to Jen and chat with her. She is such a great friend to talk to. She has a great personality, but she suddenly slipped and I run to catch her. Um, are you okay? Wow, okay, we are in such an awkward position. <laughs> um, yeah, thanks anyways. She said, I felt myself looking into her eyes and leaning in. Then I see Jen's face went red. What's going on? <gasps> What's going on? Chapter three. Okay, we're back to my POV. So I am leaving LA to London for Digifest right now. Okay, I just wanna say, I love how this story is like actually accurate because we did go I, to yes. London for Digifest. I love that like they got real, all real life events and squeezed them in here, it's so fun. Literally, it's like actually realistic. Yeah. Wait, give me one the whole The whole story is true, by the way, so. <laughs> At the airport, we go to Starbucks and have a drink. Suddenly, we see the whole O2L crew standing at the counter ordering drinks. Not to mention, I'm actually avoiding Ricky since the last little incident we had at our house. It's too embarrassing <laughs> for me to face him. Hey, Jenny, I haven't seen you for a week. How you doing? The one and only asks me and sits next to me. 
Um, well, good. I just hid in my room watching Netflix for quite a few hours. I answer him and drink my ice mocha. By the way, which plane are you boarding? We both take out our boarding pass and we got the same plane. And I look at which seat he is taking. All right, everyone, it's now my POV. I, I am sitting next to Jen. I am not sitting next to those creepy strangers, but to Jen. Ah, uh, I'm freaking out right now. Well, of course, only in my mind. Passengers, passengers of, of, oh. Oh. <laughs> passengers <laughs> of BA744. We are having the first call of boarding. Please make sure to... I heard the announcement and went immediately, finished our drink and passed all the checkings on the plane. She chooses a seat near the window and the plane is now setting off. Suddenly, she grabbed my hand tightly and I looked at her. After the plane set off, she let go of my hand and blushing. She said she is afraid of the speed of it and she needs a hand to grab. After a while, the flight attendant comes and asks if we want any drinks. I turn my head to Jen and ask her, but I find her asleep. So I ordered two Cokes. Her face is tan and beautiful. Just stunning. It's not enough to describe her. <laughs> oh, Ricky. I like that you ordered two right. Cokes for us. Uh, in real life? Normally I'd get a ginger ale. I was about to say, in real life, if I had saw you asleep, I would have gotten your ginger ale. Oh, Ricky, you know me so well. Okay. So that's one mark off here. False information. <laughs> <laughs> Chapter four, everyone. It's still my POV. So today, Jen said she got me tickets for the Miley Cyrus concert. I am so happy she invited me, but I got a little sad when I heard the tickets are from Harrison. <laughs> that means we are not going just the two of us. But, oh well. Also, everyone, this is also accurate. Yeah, um, I was just going to say, Harrison Webb did give me tickets to a Miley Cyrus concert while we were in London for Digifest. So this is very accurate. Back to my POV. Well, we are here with some British YouTubers, and the show has just started. After Miley sang a few songs, she said that she got a new part which she will call a lucky audience member to the stage to confess something out. <gasps> While I was wondering who will be the luckiest person in the world, the spotlight flashed on Ricky. <gasps> Looks like we... <laughs> <laughs> okay, wait, wait, wait. Okay. <laughs> Listen, I know Miley doesn't sound like this, but she does have a slight southern accent, so I'm just trying to... Don't worry. Finish. Looks like we got a lucky boy over there, Miley said, and some of the that audience recognized Ricky and yelled, I love you, Ricky! <laughs> then the staff comes and leads him to the stage. There comes Ricky's face on the screen. Ah, what's your name? Miley asked, and Ricky answered while also holding his vlogging camera and the mic. Hi. I'm Ricky Dillon from YouTube. Oh, I wondered why you seemed familiar to me. Welcome to my concert, Miley exclaimed. Well, I'm a bit surprised that you recognized me. He said in his fanboy voice. So today I have this part here which you can confess something. Do you have any, like, regrets or love? Great Miley voice. Stop, it doesn't sound like her at all. I'm not trying to be offensive. <laughs> my back to my POV. What can I confess? I don't really have things to say. Oh, wait. Um, I actually came to this concert with my friends and I have something to say which has been hidden in my heart for a certain amount of time. I'm sure most of my friends know my dearest friend, Gen X Pen. I take a deep breath and continue. Roses are red, violets are blue. Haha. <laughs> well, let's put this joke away first. What I want to say is, I love you, Jennifer McAllister. Will you be my girlfriend? I promise you I will not leave you. And one day I will have the ability to ask you to be become my wife. <gasps> the spotlight found Jen and focused on her. Her face appeared on screen. I saw tears coming out of her eyes. The staff came out of nowhere and passed her a mic. S yes. Yes, I will, Ricky Dillon. She said, and tears continued to flow. Oh my god. I just have to say, oh, before we move on, this might be one of the most romantic gestures I've ever read. Chapter 5, One Month Later. Okay, now it's my POV. Just a few minutes ago, Awesomeness TV called me, and they said they wanted a meeting with me and Ricky. So I messaged Ricky, and he said he will pick me up at noon. At Awesomeness TV. The staff tells us that they have a plan making a series of me and Jen. The concept is like the Gendria show. <laughs> I'm interested in this one. So is Jen. We all discussed a, a little bit and we accepted the offer. I'm looking forward to this as it will be so much fun. 
But what makes the show different is that me and Jen are going to live in a house provided by the company for six months. After five months, they will discuss whether the series is going to be continued. <laughs> oh my god. Chapter, Chapter six. six. The day they move in. Well, it's the day we move in and I stayed up late because I didn't think we had that much to pack. Not to mention I forgot we were living together for at least half a year. I ended up with a suitcase and a few boxes holding my filming stuff and more clothes. Okay, my POV. Yes! I get to see Ricky every day now. Even though there will be cameras at home and a cameraman following us when we are out, but I still feel positive about this. I am so glad that Ricky liked this proposal too. And the staff told us we can even go travel to another country in the future episodes. Oh my God, I am so excited about this. After a journey of 30 minutes from the town, we arrive at a place where there are barely people, but see views. I look at the camera held by the cameraman and said, wow, thanks to Awesomeness TV who set this up. Really, I am like in my dream right now. It's so unreal. Hey, Jen, let's go in. <sighs> Ricky yelled from the front door and I immediately run to him. Chapter seven. Well, I guess it's a new day. I woke up to realize that it's not the usual view when I usually wake up. Just to remind myself, I am now living with my wifey. <laughs> So I take my vlogging camera out and I start to vlog. Hey guys, it's Ricky and welcome to another vlog. So, so as you can see, I am in a different place and it's because I'm now living with my lovely wifey, Jen. And I guess she hasn't woke up yet, so I will now go and wake her up. I have my right hand holding my camera and walk up to Jen's room sneakily. I turn the camera and it is now vlogging my face. So guys, it's Jen's room. Oh, wait, let me redo that. So guys, it's Jen's room. I whisper, just in case I will wake her up. I sneakily open the door and walk quietly to her so I can start to yell and wake her up. Ah! Did, wait, the auto cut out. Did you yell? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Discord's cutting it out. Okay, do it one more time, then I'll go. <laughs> ah! Jen suddenly jumps up and scares me. Ah! I am seriously scared to death and I bumped my butt on the ground. Well, guys, she got me. But don't worry, I will get her back in the future. There is still plenty of time. I whisper at the second sentence so she won't... Oh, but don't worry, I will get her back in the future. There is still plenty of time. I whisper at the second sentence so she won't hear me. Chapter 8. So, it's the next day already, and I feel my body ache from the bottom to the top. And the heat is starting to rise in my body. I feel my blood start to boil, but not because of anger. All right, my POV. Okay, here's the thing. The crew just decided to call me at 6 a.m. this morning and tell me that they need more clips for the video so they need to shoot today. And I am walking to Jen's room to inform her about that. When I walk in, I saw her in a lot of pain and sweating a bit under the sheets. Hey, wifey, are you okay? I asked, shaking her up a bit, just in case she fainted. It's nothing, Ricky. <laughs> <laughs> but, <laughs> by the way, what did you want to tell me? She answered in her hoarsely voice. I help her check her temperature and it shows she is 103 degrees Fahrenheit. Wifey, you're having a fever, I exclaimed. I'm all right, hubby. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, no, no, I gotta do this. Okay. okay, you can do it. I'm all right, hubby. Calm down. She said while placing her hand on my cheek, calming me down. No, it's not okay, wifey. And by the way, the crew called me and, they, and said they needed to shoot today, I said. Well, then we should get up and prepare right now. She then forced herself to get up. No, wifey, just go to rest and I will have O2L to come help me with the shooting. I said, <laughs> knowing that some of them have nothing to do today. Okay, then go prepare Ricky. I'm fine. <laughs> she said and urged me out. I will be back checking on you every once in a while and eat this medicine first. I help her sit up and feed her the medicine before I leave the room. I see her laying on the bed, sleeping peacefully. Chapter 9. Today, everything went smooth except for Jen's situation. Her temperature is still maintaining at 103 degrees Fahrenheit, and I don't think it's going to be all right. It's currently 7.45 p.m., and I'm going to her room to check on her. I knock on the door and step in. I'm supposed to be relieved when I see her bowl has nothing in it. Yes, it has nothing in it. Instead, it's all on the floor, and she was laying there lifelessly. <gasps> I immediately rush to her and shake her body. Wifey, are you okay? Oh my gosh, please don't. I'm taking you to the hospital now. I panic, but I think maybe calling the ambulance may get her. 
may get her to see the doctor as quickly as possible. So I immediately dial the number and the ambulance arrived after, after 20 minutes. They go to her room and check her pulse and everything, then inform me that they are taking her to the hospital and I should follow. It makes me hurt during the ride as I can only sit there holding her lifeless hands and praying for her. <laughs> after we arrive, they tell me to wait outside the room and rush her to the doctor. <laughs> we need to inform her parents and our friends, just in case they want to visit her in the hospital. After 30 minutes, the doctor comes out and tells me that her condition is under control now, but she will probably still be in a coma for God knows how long. Oh no. Oh no. What a turn of events. What? Seriously, what a turn of events. Like, <laughs> I would have never guessed that was coming. My name is Dr. Colin, and I am in charge. Oh, wait. Chapter 10. <laughs> My name is Dr. Cullen, and I am in charge of Jennifer's case. Due to the severe fever she got, she seemed to lose a part of her memories. I just checked her, and she will often get a headache because she can't come up with any clues about the lost memories. And one more thing to inform you is that... You have been pranked! He smiled, and the door suddenly smashed open, and all of their friends marched in and yelled, Surprise! I was so shocked, and suddenly a pair of fragile <laughs> arms wrapped around my waist, and I turned to look. It's Jen. I immediately enclosed her fragile and thin body with my arms. <laughs> <laughs> this is sending me. Why am I so fragile and thin? <laughs> no. Chapter 11. A few months later. All right, still my POV. I finally got what I need. Well, to be exact, money. <laughs> as I want to buy an engagement ring. I am planning to propose to Jin while we are shooting. We went to the amusement park and went on a few great rides. Finally, we came to our last stop, the Ferris wheel. I led her in and I quickly rushed out of it, leaving her behind. I saw her wanting to come out of it, but with the help of, of the staff, she was forced to stay in it. <laughs> So I quickly went out and changed into my tuxedo with roses and the ring in my hand waiting. My POV. Wow, I can't believe he dumped me at the Ferris wheel. My biggest <laughs> wish in my whole life was to go on this ride with him, but, well, who knows? The tears started to flow out of my eyes, and I had decided to leave as soon as this Ferris wheel arrived at the ground. After a few more minutes, it arrived, and I stepped out looking at the ground. But as soon as I walked a few steps, I saw someone kneeling down. I looked up a little to see Ricky holding an engagement ring and people around started to cheer for him. Jennifer McAllister, it's been a long time since we met each other. You are the one that is always by my side and with me when I am sad. And I want to make you a commitment. Will you marry me? I cried and everyone around us applauded, telling me to say yes. He didn't even let me make a response and crushed his lips on mine. <laughs> it is a simple kiss but full of honey, which I won't feel sick of the sweetness. And that's it. This was last updated on August 14th, 2015. Wow. Wow. Incredible. This was- How'd we do, everyone? Wow. Yeah, how, how did you guys think? How was our performance? Honestly, the, the plot was great. Like, whoever wrote this- No, genuinely- This is one of the best fan fictions I've read. <laughs> genuinely, this was amazing. It was full of twists, turns. There was excitement. Love. Special guests? Yeah. Love, isn't it? Sadness and scared. We were scared reading it, you know? Like, imagine this being a movie. This would be a good movie. Uh, someone needs to buy this script. It wasn't the one about Harry Styles' turn into a movie? Yes. And I think Where's... someone should do that about this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This would be so good. And we could play the parts of ourselves. Mm hmm. Molly would do it probably. I think she would. And so, shout out to who wrote this? Jess. Shout out to you, Thank Jess. You, Jess. Thank you for writing this almost 10 years ago. They even made a cover art for it. Did you notice that? Oh my God, yeah. You could slap that right in a book and sell it. Yeah, you really could. This could be the, the movie poster, even. Yeah. Yeah, this could be the movie poster. Yeah. Wow. I'll talk to you later or not. All right. We'll see. I'm, you know what? Let's never talk ever again. Okay. I guess All right. I'm fine with that. Okay. All right. Well, I guess bye forever. Bye. Bye. Well, guys, I hope you enjoyed that. I've been so excited to read this at the stream. I've been looking forward to it for so long. I, I really hope you enjoyed it. Honestly, we need more fan fiction of me and Ricky. Like, we need some more present day fan fiction. So, if any of you out there who write fan fiction, um, write some more. Write some more, okay?